Hey everyone, welcome back to the garden. It's a bit of a cool day here today, so don't be fooled if you see that sun coming out, it's definitely chilly. Obviously not completely cold, because otherwise Max won't come outside, but I think he's just started shivering now because he can see the camera, he wants a little bit of attention from it. But anyway, today is an exciting day. I was a little bit tired when I woke up this morning, one of those days where it's a little bit hard to get enthusiastic, so it's the perfect day, especially with it being spring as well, to go out and do a bit of plant shopping. Unfortunately, these aren't complete impulse buys. Most of the big plants you see around me are plants I brought from the old house. But it's still exciting to get a few new plants, to go around the new decking area that I've got plants. Some exotic Mediterranean style planting. I finally decided on the plants I want to go around it. So today's video, it's not really going to be a packed full of information video. It's not a how-to guide or a care guide. I'd just like to go through the plants that I've chosen, actually get them planted in the ground. So join me if you want to, and we'll go through the reasons why I've chosen what I've chosen, and how I think the aerial grow to look like. I'm really excited to see it develop this area. It's quite an important part of the garden because it's somewhere to sit, to really enjoy it on those summer evenings. Those I definitely can't wait for. So let's get cracking with it. So Max then he's raring to go, sniffing at the fence. Next door's dog usually hangs out the other side, but not today, Max. There's no one there, mate. So the new pan I've got for the garden, it's one that I have actually got another two of further down the garden, but this one is a beauty. There you can see it, it's got really compact foliage and this, depending on how you want to pronounce it, is either a Camarops or a Chemorops and this is a Humilis and it's Vulcano. I've heard some people just call it Volcano but we'll call it Vulcano because it sounds more special that way. But as you can see, they're quite an unusual looking palm. The foliage, the leaves, they're really tightly packed, almost crumpled and probably the best way to describe this is how a Trachycarpus waggonarianus or a waggy looks compared to a standard Fortuniae. This one is the same to the standard Humilis. So the leaves on this are a lot tighter and as you can probably imagine, it's very wind resistant and it's the perfect palm if you've got a sunny, well-drained spot in your garden. And this one is going somewhere around there. Now, I had originally planned to put this big bootia there but this, despite being quite a size already, this is still a very young palm and this one will size up pretty rapidly. So I'd already taught myself out of it before I uploaded the video. That originally was going to go there. That's not going to happen now because it would just get absolutely colossal. And the beast next to it here is a Phoenix canariensis and that palm, they get absolutely massive. So if I am lucky enough for it to actually survive for a good few years, that's going to get to a size where it completely dominates this area. Looking further back then, if you can see past my shadow, the sun's actually popped out now. That is my Trachycarpus with the strip trunk, the one that I planted in the last video. And as you can see, it looks pretty good there. Unfortunately, like a lot of potted plants, when you put them in the ground, they suddenly look a lot less tall. So that one, it's certainly gonna be a good few years before I can really appreciate that strip trunk. But either way, it's the perfect pan for that spot. It's gonna give this border some really decent height at the back there. And looking more deeper into the border, you'll see at the back there, my Parthenocystis henriana, which is a Chinese Virginia creeper, which is deciduous, but it's got beautiful leaves. Almost like the standard sort of Virginia creeper, Boston Ivy kind of look, but with a silvery bit of detail into them. So that one, I think will look really fantastic against that brick wall. But today, it's all about the plants that I've chosen to fill in the gaps. Like I said, I've been a little bit more sensible than my original plans. So I've got the Humilis palm to go there, and then probably some other plants to dot around it. So I'll just go through what I've got now. So first up then, we've got these here. These are sedums, or hylotelephiums as they're now called. To me, these will always be sedums, but you can call them what you want, they're still the same thing. And these plants are an integral part of my Mediterranean exotic theme further down the garden. How I generally work with this sort of gardening is when I've got an area with a bit of shade, like we're in now, I generally go for more jungly planting. So over there you can see that I've got the tree ferns, the gunnera, and going further up the garden, you've got all kinds of different palms, fatsias, and big leaves. But then when I have sunnier areas, I either go all out, just pure tropical big leaves, like the banana plants, colocasias, or I let things take on a more Mediterranean twist. And it's flowers like this, as you can see, this one here is called Class Act. This one's actually got quite sort of, we'll say deep pink, almost magenta flowers, which generally speaking, doesn't really fit my vibe. But I think in the sunnier areas of the garden, these are fantastic. And the main reason I've actually chosen these, A, they're very easy to grow. B, they're drought tolerant, like a lot of the other plants I've got in here. C, they attract the bees, that's always good. But the main reason is you can dig them up and divide them really easily. So that means, like I'm using them here as a bit of a filler plant, if I decide later on 
that I just want this palm to have more space to itself, I can soon remove these. And if I want to swap it out for something different, again, these can easily come out. And when I do dig them out, I can split them up and have even more to go around the garden. Now, one thing you might be wondering is, why didn't I use the, the sedums from further down the garden to split those up? I didn't actually know what variety that is. It was actually one plant when we first moved in that I split into about five or six. So I really wanted to get some with a name that I actually knew was gonna be a really decent plant. So Sedum Class Axe, that's my choice for now. And it's, again, a plant, once you've got it, you can spread it all around your garden. So it's something to enjoy and great value for money. This one, as you can see, $5.99, which I think was a pretty decent price for the size plant I'm getting. And this will already get to a decent size clump this year. So that's plant number one. I'll be putting one over there and the other over that side. Plant number two then is this formium here which is Formium Platts Black. Now, Formiums are a plant I've already got plenty of in the garden, and I have done a video, I did it at some point last year, looking at care for them. So whilst I've got lots of brightly colored ones and some green ones, I've only really got another one of these Platts Black, but I think this is a fantastic plant to go at the back of this border. So what I'm thinking is, somewhere like that. Just tucked in at the back of the border there, hopefully you can see it past my shadow. And my thinking there is, well, firstly, it's a very easy plant to grow. They're a very tough plant, especially Platts Black. I know I've seen it in places where it's very exposed and it seems to do really well. So under there, against the brick shed, it shouldn't have any problems at all. They do get quite tall, but they're not complete monsters like the 10X forms. So this one will probably get to maybe around that kind of height, somewhere near the top of this fence, and it'll fill out nicely to give that area a bit of dimension. And that's really what I've sort of gone for here. You hear a lot of the time using bright plants, variegated plants to brighten up shady corners. But here I want to really go for the opposite kind of theme really. By adding darker plants at the back, I'm trying to create more depth to the border. Because obviously this is only maybe two and a half meters wide. If I can use darker plants, it'll hopefully just create the impression that it goes on a bit further. And also it'll be a nice contrast against all this green. So one thing I have said in my previous videos, looking at you know tropical garden sort of design tips, is that you really need a good base of green plants. And here, no exception to that. If you look up there, you'll see the Trachycarpus, that's green. We've got the Phoenix, again, bright green leaves. So really I wanted something else just to break that up really. Something to really show off all this green I've got going on. And on that note, one thing I will say about the Volcano Palm, to me, this palm, it's a really good sort of combination between the plants I've already got here. So not trying to be too sort of artistic or, you know, highbrow about it, but what I've tried to go for is a proper mixture of palms. So we've got the Phoenix Canariensis. That is just an absolutely massive palm. It's a monster. That'll fill out, and really, that's a statement piece of this border. I think every border, you know, unless you're really going for something subtle and harmonious, you've got to have something that really stands out, something that says, wow, and grabs you first off. And then we've got the Trekkie Harpus with a strip trunk. So yes, the strip trunk really gives it a certain extra something, but the main reason I've got that there is to give the height. So that sort of breaks up the whole border, gives it a bit of interest. So you're looking up there, you've got the Trachycarpus, then it drops down and drops down further. So the whole border flows well. But really, this spot here, practically, I need something smaller, but I also think so the whole sort of composition works well this palm will be a great choice because it's a palm that will enjoy the sunny spot and it's a palm that's got foliage that's almost a mixture between the other plants. So you've got these almost trachycarpus like leaves but they've actually sort of got the same kind of pattern as the phoenix if you look a little bit closely. Maybe it's just me imagining it but either way I think they'll work really well together not just from a design point of view but also just from a visual you know they actually fit together. So that palm will be going somewhere there the forming when we go in at the back, and then I'll have a sedum either side of it, I think, for now. I have got another euphorbia. This euphorbia is a wolf nei, which are absolutely fantastic plant when they flower. Mine, it's the same plant as that one over there. It hasn't flowered yet, and it will flower next spring, I'm pretty sure. They're only young plants. And one thing that I should say, looking at this one here, this was actually the same size plant as that one when I bought them, I think, early last spring. So you can see how this one it's been a little bit neglected this winter in a pot. I do like to keep things on the dry side during winter, but the one that's in the ground with access to all that moisture, all the nutrients, you can see just how much better it's grown. Looking side by side, color, size, vigor, everything, it really is a night and day difference. But what I'm thinking is that pan or that euphorbia there will probably go somewhere around that spot there. And it sort of creates a bit of balance really. 
So I'm having one kind of foliage repeated through the garden. And then the other aspect to this border, whilst it is mostly about the greens and the palms, I do want to have a bit of seasonal interest. So you've got the Parthenocissus, that'll give a bit of autumn colour, that'll look fantastic. The sedums, those with the bright magenta flowers, those will look fantastic in autumn, late summer, those warm evenings, and all the bees will absolutely love them. And then in spring, you've got the vivid, bright green flowers of the euphorbia to look forward to. Personally, I think that euphorbias, they produce one of the colours that you don't really see in nature. It's so vivid, it's almost unreal. So they look absolutely fantastic here. And to me, euphorbias, they're a cracking plant. I will be doing a video on them very soon, the different varieties that grow here. And one of the main methods I actually use them is to actually sort of blend jungle areas of planting, like my tree ferns here, into the more Mediterranean areas. Because they're a plant, they like that hot, dry sort of condition, like a lot of these Mediterranean plants do. But equally, I think visually, they also fit in with the jungle plants. So they're really helpful in that respect. So I'll try not to waffle too much with this video. What I thought this year, one thing I really want to improve are these sort of POV garden with me type videos, because a lot of the videos that I do, the more how-to guides, I've done videos on how to grow the Trachycarpus palms, other feather palms out of Phoenix, and I will be doing plenty more this year. But to give my garden videos another edge, I really want to do somewhere you actually join me with jobs in the garden, actually planting things and actually enjoying the garden. Because I think a lot of the time, if you watch too many videos about literally how to do things, it can leave things a little bit cold. When in reality, there's so much more to gardening than just how to. There's so much more to YouTube than just literally instructional guides. And so much the enjoyment of gardening is actually just being out here. So if I can convey a little bit of that ambience, this one's just a little bit of a test and we'll see how it goes. But either way, I'm looking forward to doing more of these kind of videos in the future. So we'll actually get cracking with some planting then. And the first thing to go in will be the formium. As you can see, this is a nice healthy plant. I always reuse the pots off pretty much anything that I buy. And there you can see the root system. That looks pretty good to me. So with most plants, I don't generally bother teasing the roots out because here we've got pretty good garden soil. They generally find their own way. So I'll just pop that down there, gently obviously, and then get a whole dug for it. So I only planted this Trachycarpus yesterday. I haven't watered it in yet because I knew I'll be doing some more planting today so the soil isn't too wet. So what I will do is, after I've got these planted tonight, give everything a good soaking in. So, you can see the soil here is actually pretty good. So this is pretty representative of our soil here. It's quite dark in colour, quite rich in nutrients. At the minute it's quite damp, but as summer comes along, it does dry out significantly. So I think really we're quite lucky to have quite a balanced sort of normal garden soil. I know a lot of people have tricky soils like clay and sand. And if we had that here, I would have put a lot more effort when we first moved in into digging in the lost organic matter. Even if that meant literally getting a lorry load of soil improver, I would have absolutely done it. So there you can see the hole. I don't generally dig holes too big. I think again, if you've got problematic soil, it's worth digging a slightly bigger hole and improving a lot of the soil around the plant. But if your soil is pretty good, I generally go with the sort of no dig approach, which I'm probably using incorrectly. But how I see it is the soil structure is something really important in the garden. There's so many things going on under there, so many different life forms, you don't want to break it up. And if you actually dig your soil up too much, I think you're probably disrupting a lot of things that can be beneficial to the plants. So I literally dig a hole that's pretty much the right size of the plant I'm putting in. That needs to be slightly deeper. Pretty much dig a hole and put it in the ground. So there we are. Get the formium. So that's Platts Black, one look at it before it goes in the ground. And I'm going quite central with it. And it should go nicely about there. So let's get that soil firmed in. Choose my trainers for this. This is why I wear old trainers out in the garden most of the time, because they get used for everything. And I don't mind if they get muddy. Ordinarily, I would say try not to walk on the soil too much, but to be honest, with me just putting these in the ground, 
I'm planting the whole area up at the same time. It doesn't really matter too much. So that is there, nicely patted in. Happy with that. So that forming there at the back of the border, I think that will continue to fill out nicely. It's got a bit of room around it to really grow, but to be honest, it's, I really want to have that as a sort of mid-level plant, really. It'll cover up that white where the salt and the bricks has come out, and it'll also be a nice sort of contrast to the, the leaves of the Virginia creeper. So, next up then, we've got the palm. We've got the volcano palm, which, as you can see, the leaves look pretty green. Now, the nursery I actually bought this from, this has been kept outside all winter, which might sound like really bad care, but to be honest with you, I know that any plant I buy from there, it's a good plant because we've had minus four, probably even less out there this year. That's a plant that will have taken the cold and that's been in a pot so it makes it even colder still really for the plant and it's survived really well. A couple of key mops or camrops buying tips then, whether the variety you've gone for is the standard humilis, whether it's a volcano or whether it's a compactor, even within those varieties, there's a lot of variation. Some have got tighter leaves, Others have got more rounded ends for leaves. This seems to be a very variable plant. But one thing that you should really look at if you get a chance to see a plant in person is look out for spotting on the leaves. Now this one, you can see a bit of light spotting, but that's all right because it's a plant that's been outside all winter, outside in a pot, and that's the newest leaf. So if it was gonna show any damage at all, it would be on there. But if you see these kind of blemishes across most of the foliage, then to me, that would be a sign to steer clear of that plant because it seems to be something that they suffer with to varying extents. Every plant can be variable. Yes, it can be made worse by having them in a damp spot, I think, and also by not having enough airflow. But if you've got a plant that's prone to it in the first place, personally, I'd avoid that at the time of buying. And the second thing when it comes to these palms, obviously this one is a volcano. Like I've already said, it's got all that almost sort of waggy-like form, very compact, very stiff leaves. But you want to make sure that you're actually buying a good bit of trunk. So if I pick this one up, you can see there, this one's actually raised up half the pot, which isn't ideal, but you can see there it's got a nice, strong, solid trunk base. The leaves and the actual stems, they're quite compact, and that is important because a lot of the ones that you see, I won't mention any sort of shop names or anything, you see them sold at a certain height, or you might even see them in certain supermarket or budget superstores, where the plant, it looks really tall, it looks impressive, it might be this tall, maybe something like that, but it's actually just really sort of elongated leaves. That plant's been greenhouse grown and it's been stretched essentially, where there's lots of light, lots of heat. Yes, they grow quickly, but they've only got a very small trunk. So 100% of the time, I'm happy with having a stockier plant, a healthier plant, the one that's just been stretched in a greenhouse. Because this plant's older, it's able to cope with the cold better, and it's not gonna suddenly shock it going into the garden. Because obviously we're in early April, and I'm planting this outside, there's still gonna be frost, there almost definitely is. So it wouldn't be the best time to plant something that's been in a warm greenhouse all winter. But this being the plant that's been outside, it's absolutely fine to go in the ground now. It's not frozen and it's unlikely to see a deep freeze from now. Touch wood anyway. So let's get a whole dog. So this one, what I'm thinking is, All these camrops or keemrops, they're suckering palms, which means they send out new shoots from the base. Now, one thing I have seen a lot of people asking on Facebook is can you separate these and create new plants? I don't really know if you can. I think they actually come out from the trunk, but even if you could, personally, I wouldn't anyway. I wouldn't risk damaging the actual main plant. And I think really, as much as that trachycarpa strip trunk there is in some people's eyes a crime against nature, this, trying to create this into something that it isn't by separating them I just wouldn't do it really I'm more than happy with the palm as it is and I don't want to cut it off for the size of that plant anyway it'd literally be worth a pound it's not worth risking hurting the main palm for and personally I like these in multi trunks I have got a big one further down the garden a really big one that I will be planting this spring but for now I think that that one somewhere there I think that'll work so the thinking for this, if you can hear me over that droning car in the distance, is that this is gonna fill out nice and slowly because these are quite slow growing plants. Unlike the Trachycarpus and the Phoenix, which certainly sort of motor away, this Camrops, they are a little bit slower growing. 
So realistically, what we're talking about is in maybe say 10 to 15 years, it'll be up here maybe. But for me, in this position here, I absolutely don't mind that. Because by that point, it'll have filled out nicely, the Trachycarpus will be absolutely racing towards the sky, and this Phoenix, if hopefully it's still there, it'll be absolutely colossal. So a more compact palm here will be absolutely perfect. I don't need a huge leaf monster just here. So, get the palm out. And let's get a whole dog. So you'll have to forgive all the mud and mess on the ground at the minute. One thing I will actually say before I plant it, a lot of my borders, you might notice, the ground isn't perfectly flat. I do like to have subtle sort of, you know, level changes in the borders. I think it makes them look a little bit more natural. Not to the point of raising things up to ridiculous levels at this point, because I have got that brick shed there. If I raise things up too much, then that'll just put loads of water into the wall. But I do like subtle sort of changes. I think the overall look, it presents the plants in a better way. So let's get that whole dog. Let's put the soil down there. Obviously, if I was planting this at a different time to that Trachycarpus, I'd now be digging through the roots. So this is one benefit in planting up a whole border at the same time. I'm not growing too many different seeds this spring, so one of my focuses is to actually get parts of the garden that are in development, more developed, and this area is certainly one of them. This is the smallest area, a nice bite-sized area to develop and the one that will probably get the most enjoyment from this year. So that's the reason why I'm focusing it. You can actually hear by the sound of that spade, the soil is quite gritty down there, quite stony. And that should suit this palm right down to the ground. So looking at the pot again, probably about the right size. Might just go a little bit wider. Yeah, so hopefully this kind of soil will be pretty much perfect without needing a lot doing. And we'll just pick that lump out, whatever that is. Big lump of coal or something. And there we go. Just mess up the bottom of the hole. To make it easy for the roots to get in. And then it's time to get it out its pot. So, one thing I will say about these palms they're quite spiky, they're quite vicious. If I hold it upside down, you can see the leaves have got a beautiful sort of silvery color into them. And to me, as these plants size up, that's one of the most attractive parts of them. But attractive, they are, they are still very dangerous. They've got these spines on the leaves. They're not massive, but they definitely hook into you. So I'm very keen to avoid them. And that pot's just snapped, which nearly bit me. So like a lot of palms in pots like this, they pretty much fill them pretty well. Oh, as you can probably tell there, this pot is a little bit of a cheap plastic one and it didn't like that. So typically, as I'm filming a video, it would be difficult. I imagine if this was on TV, they would have pre-taken this out of the pot and then just put it back in for effect. But we're real here, keeping it real. In fact, me struggling mid-video. So there we go. And to be honest with you, you can see there, this is a plant that is well overdue a place in the ground. Those roots are quite congested, but at least it's a well-developed plant. And the way around I'm gonna put it, I'm just gonna allow for those suckers that are already present. I'm thinking basically like that. Something like that there. So I'm happy with the soil level. Just move that pot away before I fall over it. I'm happy with the soil level. I'm happy with the positioning. It's always worth just standing back, looking at the pan from a few different angles before you firm that soil in. Because then if you end up having to move it, it makes it so much harder and you risk damaging that root ball unnecessarily. One thing you might notice with palms like the Volcano or even the Trachycarpus. At this time of year, some of the leaves, they can look a little bit yellow, but I don't chop them off until they're absolutely brown 
or, or, or I know some people are relentlessly tidy, but at this time of year, it really is worth being patient because honestly, a few weeks of actual warmth, temperatures around 20 degrees, and the plants just look so much healthier. Those leaves that might have a slight yellow sort of turn at the minute will soon green up. So I think I'm happy with that. Had a look around it. One thing that I've probably mentioned in some of my videos, it should leave plenty of room for the plants. But another thing, I don't really put them so far apart that each plant's got its full room to grow to maturity. Because ultimately, every plant's got its own sort of, you know, maturity age. A plant like this is so slow growing, it's going to take years and years to really fill out. And I don't mind the plants interacting. So this palm here, if a sucker goes off behind it, there's a little bit of room for it. If one wants to grow over this way, there's room for it. I don't mind the fronds crossing over. At the end of the day, if you can think of the most beautiful natural places full of plants that you've been to in your life, I'm sure there's hundreds of different plants all interacting. And for me, that's an essential part of a jungle border. I think the magic really is finding that balance between you know complete anarchy and actually organized. So that's what I'm actually going for here. Plants that have got enough room around them, they are gonna blend a little bit, but it's not gonna look a complete mess, hopefully. So let's get some soil around it. Be lazy and push it in from that side. Take out any big stones, but like I said, we are quite lucky here with the soil. So I'll just gently push that palm a little bit that way and get the soil firmed in. So I'll just use my feet for this. Not, not completely gently, but not hard either. I just want to firm it down enough so there's no air gaps. As you can see, there's a bit of all sorts in that bit there, so we'll not have that. And you want to make sure, I think really with palms like a lot of exotics, that the plant is actually level with the soil. Like I mentioned in my video, planting the trachycarpus, I don't think there's any real benefit in either having them lower than the soil level to catch more water, or indeed higher. I think it just creates more problems than it actually sorts. So getting in there. So, I am happy with that. I think that is going to look absolutely fantastic in the future when the fence is black. I think that palm's absolutely going to pop out. And like you might have seen in previous videos, this area, it really receives that evening sun. You can probably see now it's late afternoon. These palms, with their very sort of bold shapes, they're going to look fantastic with that sun against them. I do enjoy the garden, not just for the plants, but also photographically. And I think really these combinations of texture, of leaf shapes, of different shades of green, it's gonna look great with that sunlight on them. So now we've got that in place, I need to decide what the other plants are. So my next one is this Euphorbia. Like I said, this is Euphorbia wolfenii. It's got a beautiful flower. This one, it's definitely not gonna flower this year. And to be honest, it could have been actually watered a little bit more over winter, but at least it survived. And moderately healthy so again it's a plant if you just ignore all that dust flying at me into my face and my eyes it's a plant that's ready to go in the ground and what i'm thinking is as my spade falls over as you can probably tell there's no rehearsals of these videos we we'll just go for it that euphorbia is going to go there now yes it will get quite big but no i don't think it's going to completely shade out the volcano i think that'll fill up nicely they get to maybe a little bit bigger than that size and flowers that stick up quite a bit taller. So I think that'll fill that area in quite nicely there. And it also leaves a couple of spaces in front of it for the sedums. So let's get a small hole dug then and that's in the ground. So just lay that down carefully there. I probably should be using the trowel for this, I'll be honest. So I don't disturb too many trachycarpus roots. 
but it's not a massive pot, so I'll just go for it. That is good soil. So I'll keep changing the angle round as we're doing this. I'll tell you what, the sun's come out now and it's actually quite warm. It's only around 11 or 12 degrees now, but when the sun's shining, it's quite pleasant. We're getting to that time of year. So I think that'll look great somewhere around there. So that's naturally going to want to grow more towards the sunlight. Yeah, happy with that. So let's get it put back. here and they're playing football in the background and village life going on a lot of the sounds that i usually cut out of my videos <laughs> one thing you don't see in my normal videos is just the amount of takes that some parts actually take not just because of me missing out what i wanted to say but more usually noises of random traffic people shouting in the background but i guess it really adds something to these videos So, let's get the hands in there. And there is a spot for the euphorbia. Another euphorbia that I did really consider for that spot there is euphorbia John Phillips, which is a fantastic one. I got a small plant from Craig over at Grow Paradise last spring, and it grew really well last year, I suppose. It sized up really, really well. But that one, to me, they're a little bit daintier. The flowers are probably a little bit better on wolf any eye. And I didn't want something that's too big and too rounded. So I'm happy with that there. So next step, Ben, is the sedums or hylotilephiums to give them the Sunday name. These beauties here. They're lovely. So these, they're not a tropical plant. They're not really an exotic plant. They're a really common, really tough garden plant, really. But to me, they've got that succulent look to them. They work really well with other kinds of exotics. And when they flower, they absolutely fit in with a Mediterranean vibe. Regardless of where they're actually from and how easy they are to grow, something that adds so much beauty to the garden and really suits the theme down to the ground, you've got to give it a go. There's lots of different varieties you can get, some with different color of foliage. So definitely check them out. And splitting them is really easy. I don't want to do this one just yet, but potentially I could just put the spade through there and get two straight out of it. But at 5 dollars I think I'd rather just have a couple of very nice plants to actually look great this year. So we're gonna have one there and one there at the other side of the border. So let's get a couple of holes dug. I tell you what, I'm looking forward to those warm spring and summer days so much. When you have days like today, it was minus one when I came outside earlier this morning. Somewhere around there, there was ice in the bottom of a pot saucer. That's not good. We don't want much more ice this year. I think this winter, whilst it's not been anything historic or record-breaking, it's definitely been really sort of just long. It's dragged out so long. It's felt like we've had so much grey, windy weather. And I actually did so many videos, or tried to do so many videos early this year, in late January and February, but I just couldn't because of the wind. So it definitely, it definitely feels like it's dragged out. But now at least we're coming out the other side of it. So I don't want to plant this too deep. I probably dug out a little bit too much. So I'll just sprinkle some of that in. Take out the tape. So that's about right. So what I'm thinking is something like that. So it's worth giving these a little bit of space because they will fill out. These, this will probably get to maybe around that size by the end of this year. It'll have all those amazing flowers on. I know it's not evergreen, which was my main sort of intention for this area, but planting these, it means it's something that I can easily dig up at the end of the year, split up, move somewhere else, and it's just gonna keep growing away. And it also sort of buys me a bit of time really, 
before I decide what's going here. But I really need to know exactly what's happened with the greenhouse before I can plan this out. So, let's just firm that in again. So as you can see with these, whatever the plants are, whether the palms from the other side of the world or even Europe, whatever they are, the basic principles of digging a hole, putting a plant in, pretty much the same. There's nothing complicated about it. If your soil's reasonably good, if the area is either full sun or partial shade, so many of these incredible plants, it's as simple as digging a hole, planting them, and then watering them, especially for the first year. But once you pass that first year, unless it's exceptionally dry for long periods of summer, they can pretty much cope by themselves. So next up then, the other sedum. We'll get a hole dug for this one. So over time, that's a low there, a low striatula. Looks a bit, a little bit ropey now, but it's a plant that can take some severe cold. I've read they can take down to minus 10, and I don't doubt that really. They've got flowers just like a red hot poker, or nifofia or nifofia, how you want to pronounce it. But I just like the, the real sort of exotic vibe they get. And I don't just mean exotic in terms of palms, in terms of something that we can't grow here at all. A lows, there's not many we can even attempt to grow. So having something with that kind of fleshy foliage, those rosettes, that really special sort of exotic look, it definitely deserves a spot in the garden. Don't want to disrupt that euphorbia too much. So, somewhere there. Sorry if you can see my feet or random angles during this video. I'm using this as a bit of a test so I can find out really what works with this setup and what doesn't. So keep the pot again, put it over there, and then we'll put the plant in. So with this one, I think quite centrally there, and we'll firm the soil in around it. Just sort of level it up a little bit. It's time to dig some of this and put it back in. You can probably see I'm not being too neat with this, but that's just because I'm messy. <laughs> There's no reason for it. So I'll just push this down with my hand so I'm not plonking my boots into the soil. So I'm happy with that spacing. So that is this area planted up, for now at least anyway. I have left room for a few more plants, potentially this euphorbia, which is one I posted a picture of this past weekend, euphorbia mercenites. They are absolutely fantastic and they spread really well. So potentially that might just go behind where that little iris George is there and it will sort of gently hang over the edge. I'm not 100% decided on that. That could go in, not a problem there. But generally speaking, I think these plants will fill out nicely this year. So this is the border that will hopefully get better every single year. And it's a border that allows a bit of flexibility because there's nothing stopping me later on. Like I said, at the end of this year, pick that glass out, you didn't see that. There's nothing stopping me actually moving the sedums and putting something completely different there. Maybe some small agave, something like that. Maybe just one agave there, we'll see. And there's nothing stopping me putting some more plants at the back. Maybe a riceness or two to really have some tropical summer foliage. But overall, I think I'm happy with the look and there's enough room around the plants, definitely for the medium term to let them fill out a bit. So all I need to do now is give it a good watering and then maybe cover the surface of the soil. So I hope you enjoyed this little video, getting your hands dirty with me and a bit of actual garden life. Because I think sometimes you probably get the impression I'm in the garden all the time. But the reality is for a lot of winter, it's pretty much a case of do these videos, then hurry up and get inside and stay warm. But now it's at this time of year, now it's spring. It's finally time to actually be out and enjoy being out here. Just as I said that, the sun's gone behind a cloud and it suddenly feels a lot colder. Either way, it's great to be out. 
getting my hands dirty and absolutely some garden work. And I hope this video has actually brought you into the experience a little bit more. So I know this one might have been a bit rough, maybe a bit rambling at times, but it's something that I really want to develop this year. Something that I want to build on to try to give videos that aren't just a case of information, information, bad music, information, artistic video information i think sometimes it's all about the experience actually doing things in the garden so i really want to try to involve you in that a little bit more because ultimately that's what we do it all for it's all about enjoying the experience and even today on an early april day yes it's not been the warmest day but the sky's mostly been blue the birds have been singing away and it's been great to actually be out here getting my hands dirty i definitely feel better for coming out like i said i was a lot tired at the start of the video now i feel like i've got some energy and now i'm actually out here i want to get on with some more stuff so that's fantastic if you can go outside go outside and i hope you enjoy your gardens this week so thank you very much for watching for sticking with this video i'll see you in the next one bye <laughs>